What happened to Ty Lawson? This has been one of my most requested videos. I've gotten comments about a Ty Lawson career video going back two months ago, and I just kept putting it off until now. Since this is a video you guys want to watch, here it is. Ty Lawson was a 5'11", 195-pound point guard, and at one point in his career, he looked like a top 10 point guard in the league and a borderline all-star. In 2013, he led the Nuggets to 56 wins, but today in 2018, he's out of the NBA and it's looking like he may never get signed by a team again. The NBA regular season is about to end, and if you want to see a game before the season is over, I would recommend downloading the SeatGeek app. I'm sure you guys have heard of it, it really is the best app to purchase tickets. I've used it before to see an NBA game, and it's not just for basketball either, they also have concerts and different sporting events that you can look at. What SeatGeek does is it puts tickets together from all over the web into one spot, then they give those tickets a rating out of 100, so if it's green then you know it's a good deal, if it's red then you know it's bad. Something that I really like about SeatGeek is that it will let me see what my seats look like before I buy them. If you're looking to get tickets for an event in the future, the link to the SeatGeek app will be in the description, and to get $20 off your first ticket purchase, you can use my code KANE at checkout. At his peak, Ty Lawson was a super fast point guard that could get into the paint. He was best in pick and rolls and finding the open man when the defense collapsed on him. The Denver Nuggets played at one of the fastest paces in the league when he was a starter there, and he was one of the reasons why they were so effective in the fast break. Lawson was probably one of the three fastest point guards in the league. He capped out at 10 assists per game and was third in the NBA in assists per game in 2014 and 2015. Some would argue that Lawson was in that 10 to 12 range of best point guards in the league at that time, and in certain stretches, he played like an all-star. At the start of the 2013-2014 season, Ty Lawson got off to a super hot start, and it was looking like he was on his way to his first all-star selection. In the month of November 2013, he averaged 21 points, 8 assists on 47% shooting and 37% three-point shooting. This was Lawson at his peak as a playmaker and a scorer. He sometimes would be passive as a scorer, but in that month he found a nice combination of being aggressive while keeping his teammates involved. The season before that, he led the Nuggets to 57 wins and the third seed in the West, but they got knocked out in the first round by the Warriors. Those moments and stats were the great times as a player for Lawson, but his legal trouble is what cut his career short in Denver. Before the start of the 2013-2014 season, Lawson and his girlfriend got into a fight and were both arrested for a domestic violence incident, but the charges were eventually dropped. About a year and a half later, in January 2015, Lawson was charged with driving under the influence after being pulled over for driving 60 miles per hour in a 35 mile per hour zone, and the officer found him with bloodshot eyes, alcohol on his breath, and he struggled to keep his balance when he got out of the car. He pled guilty to that crime, but that would not be his last time dealing with a DUI. Six months after that DUI arrest, Lawson was arrested and charged with driving under the influence for speeding at 2 a.m. That was his fourth arrest in two years, and he was forced to spend a month at a rehab center before he had to go to court for the DUI charges. Not to mention, that arrest was six days before he would get traded to the Houston Rockets. Once Lawson was finally off the team, Nuggets president Josh Kroenke told the media that even when Lawson was playing well, there were times where he had alcohol in his system before practice. His final season in Denver was his worst year at the time in field goal percentage, three point percentage, and free throw percentage, and the Nuggets only won 30 games. Here's an interesting video. Check this clip out of Timothy Mozgov when he was supporting Lawson for an all star spot in 2014. Listen to this. Hey Mozgov, yo, um, the all star, you got a vote for my boy Ty. He gave me the assist, I got a bucket, so he's a, he's a good dude. You got a vote for him, you know, and again, have a good day. Uh, don't drink and drive. If you caught it at the end, Mozgov slipped in a don't drink and drive message to Lawson. Shout out to Mozgov for that, that's looking out for a friend. Now the Rockets trading for Lawson was interesting. This was a huge risk for Daryl Morey and the Houston Rockets because he just racked up two DUIs in six months, but at the same time, there was a possibility it could work out. He was only 28 and when Lawson is healthy and everything is clicking, he is a guy that can lead your offense. The Rockets were looking to get an edge on the Warriors and they thought him next to James Harden could help them get back to the Western Conference Finals, but Lawson did not finish that year with the Houston Rockets because he and Harden just did not click on the court. Lawson struggled to play off the ball 
And during the month of November 2015, Lawson averaged 7 points, 4 assists on 34% shooting. He finished with career lows in multiple stat categories that year. He lost a little bit of quickness and he didn't look like the player in Denver just a year ago, and the Rockets bought him out in March. The Pacers would later sign him and he finished the year there. Lawson's final season in the NBA was the 2016-2017 season with the Sacramento Kings and he rebuilt his reputation a bit on the court. His averages looked nothing like his numbers in Denver, but he looked like a player that could be a decent backup. His alcohol problems popped up again though when a Denver court issued a bench warrant against him because they said he violated his probation. They said he did not complete the community service hours he was required to. In August 2017, he agreed to a one-year deal with the Shandong Golden Stars of the Chinese Basketball Association, but apparently he didn't finish the season and left the team. I was actually looking at his Twitter feed the other day, and I saw some fans from China saying that he needs to rejoin the team, then I saw some other tweets saying that thank you for coming back. So I guess he was off the team for a period of time and now he's back with them. I couldn't find any official news on it anywhere. I wouldn't have found it if I didn't look at his Twitter timeline. If anybody watching this video keeps up with the CBA, definitely do not hesitate to drop a comment because I couldn't find anything else besides those tweets from the fans. Ty Lawson would probably still be in the league as a 7th man or an 8th man, but he struggled with an alcohol addiction and got arrested way too many times. It's hard to commit to giving money to somebody who has gotten into that much legal trouble while their play is declining. Again, he did look like he was going to recover his career with the Kings. He was a good backup there, but if I had to guess, teams probably would rather develop their rookies or give guys from the G League a shot over picking up Lawson. What do you guys think? Will he ever get back into the league? The Wizards were considering signing him about a month ago, but nothing came from that. I think there's a very small chance that he could be back in the league, but that team who signs him probably will be going through point guard injuries. I appreciate it if you made it to this point of the video. Let me know if you have any other ideas for this type of content, and I'll see you guys soon.